when the bells chime, it's a precious gift calling us home to ourselves, calling us back to the present moment. I love teaching at the Dharma Collective for so many reasons, and those bells are on the list. At home, I have an old phone that I have set up using an app called Westminster Chimes. <laughs> they can like 12 hour do different things, but I have it only an hour and a half hour from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And when I stop stopping for the bell, I turn it off for a while. And then I turn it back on again. And it's such a support because we need support. This is crazy. This current modern life. So many demands, so many pressures. And I don't think it was ever easy at any other era of time either. Each era of time has had its own particular challenges. And I find that the bells are such a support. Such a support. So let's settle in for practice. I'll guide us for a while, maybe half an hour, and then we'll have, oh, then I'll share a bit on the topic. So finding a posture that's comfortable for you. If you're sitting on the floor, you might check and see if the floor, the hardness of the floor is okay, or you want to put a blanket under you. If you're good, great. If you're sitting in a chair, just checking in. Is the body in a comfortable enough position? I see some of you have cushions under your feet. That can be really helpful. Sometimes it's nice to sit all the way back so there's some support. And sometimes it's nice to sit kind of in the front third so that the sit bones are supported and the natural lumbar curve happens in the low back. Exploring. For now, finding the posture that's supportive enough, comfortable enough, good enough. And that might take some movement. You might find you want to stand. Or if you're at home, you might lie down. Taking the time to discern what posture and what form of that posture is most supportive for you now is an act of love, an act of kindness, an act of generosity. You're worthy of that love and care. A posture that's upright and stable, where there's the length in the spine, and breath across the shoulders, the coccyx rooting down or elongating. A posture in which we feel the support of the earth, the hug of gravity, and the spaciousness of space. Often at the Dharma Collective, we meditate in silence for about half an hour or so. But this evening, I'm going to offer a lot of words. So if the words are not your thing or you're finding them to not be supportive, pay them no mind. Allow them to just arise and pass like waves on the ocean. But maybe the content of the words will be supportive for you. Wonderful. Sing for them. Enjoy them. Notice where they take you. Notice what arises in response.
There are many ways to practice the cultivation of metta. What I'll offer now is one of the ways that Pompor Pasano offered on a retreat that he offered some 10 or 15 years ago. It was recorded and transcribed and offered in a book called Abundant, Exalted, and Measurable. May it support you. You may these three sounds of the bell call you home to yourself and to this moment. As we embark on the journey of cultivating love here and now. Tuning into the body. As much as is possible, resting in awareness, the experience in the heart, in the chest, in the gut, in the torso. We're noticing what happens as we incline the heart mind toward metta. Resting, opening, receptive, engaging in this practice of cultivation. You may or may not experience metta or any of the states that I'll point to. It's all good. It's a practice. It's not an arriving or having. Or rather being with ourselves as we are on the journey. Resting and opening.
feeling ourselves being here. Or if it's supportive, bringing to mind an image of ourselves as if we're sitting in front of a mirror right here, right now. Or an image of the past, your fourth grade self, your yesterday self, your baby self. So that you might wish yourself friendliness, care. Noticing the state of the heart and the gut. Allowing ease and contraction both to be greeted with kindness and care. Allowing contraction to be our friend, just as much our friend as moments of ease. May I be well. Noticing what happens inside. As we incline the heart mind, as we offer ourselves this wish, this wholesome wish, may I be well. This heart, mind, body, I call myself as worthy of wellness as every other being. May I be well. Happy. Peaceful. and prosperous. May no harm come to me. Noticing how that wish feels in the body. May no difficulties come to me. May no problem come to me. Remembering that this is a wish. May I always meet. with spiritual success.
May I have the patience Can you touch patience? Can you feel patience possible to cultivate the direct experience of patience? Feeling patience in the body. Courage. Understanding. And determination. To me. and overcome inevitable difficulties, problems, and failures in life. Noticing how it feels in the body. Resting down into the torso, the chest, the gut. And bringing to mind a felt sense of them or an image. Someone toward whom love flows easily. Could be a pet or a human. Traditionally, it's suggested that we practice metta for those who are alive rather than someone who has passed. But it's your practice, so whatever arises is great. Some being toward whom love flows easily for you. Well, maybe it's hard to find someone, no problem, take your time. Could be a goldfish. Or maybe lots of beans are arising. That's fine too, you can hold them as a collective. Don't have to limit yourself. A felt sense of them or an image. Wishing for their safety and even sending them metta and continuing to cultivate awareness of the felt experience in the body. May you be well. And you might insert their name if that's helpful for you. What feels available, what necessary. Trust in your own heart.
May you be well. May you be happy. May you be peaceful. May you be prosperous. May no harm come to you. May no difficulties. May no difficulties come to you. May no problems come to you. May you always meet with spiritual success. May you have the patience Courage. Understanding. And determination. To meet and overcome inevitable difficulties, problems, and failures in life. Allowing this dear one or collective of people to stay present or fade away 
whatever happens is just fine. And bring it into our awareness. And the collective, all those people here in the space at the San Francisco Dharma Collective who are making up this evening Sangha. Those of you on Zoom, other people in your space, wherever you might be physically, other beings. And more broadly, those who any of you might practice with, those with whom you share the Dharma, the Sangha, the community, the precious jewel of the Sangha, hold in this group of people in your heart, in your mind, seeing them, feeling them. Including ourselves, offering metta for the Sangha. May we be well. Tuning into the body. Happy. Peaceful. And prosperous. May no harm come to us. May no difficulties come to us. May no problems come to us. May we always meet with spiritual success. May we have a patience. Courage. Understanding. And determination. To meet. And overcome. Inevitable difficulties, problems, and failures in life. And expanding our well wishes out more broadly beyond the physical space that we're in, beyond the Sangha, to embrace all beings everywhere, above and below and all around, those born and to be born, medium, short and small, the great and the mighty, 
the seen and the unseen. May all beings, including ourselves, may all beings be well. Happy. Peaceful. and prosperous. May no harm come to us. May no difficulties come to us. May no problems come to us. May we always be with spiritual success. May all beings have a patience. Healing courage, understanding, and determination to meet and overcome inevitable difficulty, problem, and failures yeah. in life. Resting in awareness of the body, just a few minutes together.
feeling the body. Receiving the bell. Sending metta out into the universe. Gradually expanding the field of awareness to include movement. When you're ready, light and whatever level of sight is available to you. Listening to the body moving and stretching in whatever ways feel good. Mm -hmm. I hope that was nourishing for you. I trust that for some of you, it was the first time you've heard that particular way of practicing metta. As I said, Lumpa Pasano offered a retreat, a metta retreat, and he offered lots of ways to practice. And I wasn't able to go on that retreat. I, I wasn't a student of his yet, but I, I read the book while I was staying at Abaya Yeri for a month, some years ago now. And I felt like I was receiving a more possible through the book because I was with him. <laughs> and that particular amalgamation of words has been so powerful for me. I love the message that like, yes, yeah, it's going to happen. Like you're going to, you're going to fuck up. Like you're human. You're going to make mistakes. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. And maybe the crassness of my speech, like there's some buckling in you. Oh, there's a mistake right there. It's like, yeah, we're human beings. We're not perfect. And sometimes I think that we create our greatest suffering by thinking we're supposed to be perfect or that this moment is supposed to be perfect or somehow the fact that we're feeling poorly is a punishment because we've done something wrong. You feel poorly sometimes, physically, emotionally. It's the nature of being alive. I, I really value the invitation to practice patience, courage, understanding. And the, that that leads to this loving friendliness, of this loving kindness. It leads to so much more ease some freedom from the dukkha that is created by like holding on really tight or trying to do everything right. Or like, so, you know, it's my fault because such and such happened. It's like, it's inevitable. Difficulties, problems, failures. Oh. <laughs> oh. Or as they say, you know, shit happens. What are you going to do about that? What are you going to do with that? How are you going to tend to yourself in those moments? I think that's that's one of the great places for practice. Oh, and there we are. I, I got you. I hold my face in my two hands. I hold my face to keep my loneliness warm, to keep myself company. Mm. So we all know that the world is a mess, right? To are engaged with any kind of intake of news. You're familiar with lots of 
awful things. It seems like it's never ending sometimes. And I've been thinking about what if, what if we led with love? Right, so at, at SF Sangha, each month on the first gathering, we practice with the some form of the five precepts, uh, five mindfulness trainings. And if we practice the non-harming of those trainings, that's an act of love. But it's not the only possible manifestation of love. There are many others. And I notice that if I'm leading with love and my heart is inclined toward love, even if there's a difficulty or someone misunderstands me, it's so much lighter inside. I miss the second error. I don't have to then beat myself up around because I was leading with love. Sure, maybe there was a misunderstanding. Maybe what I did wasn't the best. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll clean it up. I learned something. But there's space for the miscommunication or the imperfection that isn't there if I'm like trying to do it right or trying to please you or trying to make you happy or trying to get you to like me or whatever those other things are that motivate us sometimes. Like, oh, I'm cultivating this capacity, cultivating the capacity to lead with love. It's not that I'm gonna lead with love all the time. I'm gonna fall down. I mean, I am not like a big Michael Jordan fan, but there's this Michael Jordan quote but of course, now I can't even give you. I think there's a Steve Jobs similar quote, but it's basically, it's not about, ah, crap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Something like, you know, people don't remember the 99 times you failed. But even those who are thought of as being the best in their discipline, they're failing all the time. I am definitely a LeBron fan, and I think that part of the reason that LeBron is such an amazing basketball player is that he practices diligently. And if you've been watching his career at all, which has been long, his game is ever-changing. This season, he's, like, thrown all these three-point shots. He was not a three-point shooter, but he's getting old. You know, because you're old in basketball at, like, 38, right? He's getting old. And so he's protecting his body more. Skillful means he's finding an appropriate response to the conditions that are present. He's not charging the basket all the time anymore. And he's listening to his body. I'm not sure why I'm talking about him. I'm not a huge basketball fan. But last year he hurt his ankle, right? So he was hurting his ankle. And so he had to ease off because he listened to his body. And so now he's not maybe running quite as much. He's, oh, I, I can learn to throw three points because he's practicing three point shots. And we can learn to lead with love if we practice love. If we practice meeting ourselves with love, if we practice meeting the moment with love, if we practice leading with love, we can. It's possible. And we're not going to do it perfectly. Like, that's not the goal. But each time we do it, it gets easier we get, quote unquote, better at it. It feels more comfortable. And we find that we're a little bit more gentle with ourselves. We're more kind and we're more loving with ourselves. Because guess what? Every time we're practicing metta, we're experiencing it. Because we're the ones practicing it. It's not for that person out there that you might be offering it to, it's for you. So that you can be a kinder, gentler person, more caring, more loving person, because it feels good. And if we were all doing that, we'd have a different world. We'd have a different world. And the truth is, the place that we have the most impact, the most agency, the most possibility of creating change is in this organism, this organism we refer to as self. Now, this mind, body, amalgamation of experience, this constant process of flow. This is where we have the possibility to create some change. And as we create some change in here, 
it impacts the people and places and things that we interact with. And it flows out and it ripples out. So if I offer someone a smile on the street, they're more likely to offer someone a smile on the screen. I'm sure you've noticed yourself when someone cuts you off or is rude to you, the next person you interact with suffers the consequences of that. It goes both directions, or it can go in various directions, right? So this cultivation of love, of metta. And I've also noticed that when I'm cultivating love, things are more beautiful. There's um, hmm. it's just a different quality to experience when I'm leading with love inside of myself. I'm mean, just walking over here, practicing the felt sense of metta, like not practicing with phrases, but as I walked over here. Every time I dropped back into feeling love, suddenly my environment was gorgeous. I noticed a shadow or a blossom or a certain shape or a leaf. And I was just walking through the mission. You know, I wasn't like up in some gorgeous vista hill, poppies everywhere environment. I didn't see any poppies, but it was beautiful because I was here and I was inclined in the heart toward beauty. Because a heart that's full of love is beautiful. Thich Nhat Hanh reminded us that if we tend to the flowers, the beautiful flowers in our garden, we don't have to worry about the weeds. We don't have to pull up the weeds. I don't know about you, but before I came into practice, there was so much conditioning. Like, gotta, gotta, gotta get rid of that stuff I don't want. Like, get in there, get those weeds, dig them up. And like, really a little bit too much focus on the unwholesome. But I found that as the mind and heart are inclined towards what's beautiful, inclined towards the flowers, inclined towards the wholesome, that blossoms and grows. And the weeds just kind of, they take care of themselves. They wither a little bit or they aren't getting the sun that they need or the nutrients because I'm not feeding them so much anymore. And maybe metta lands for you, maybe metta doesn't land. Mindfulness is enough. Kind action motivated by mindfulness is enough. But we begin where we are. We begin where we are. So I encourage you to pick this up and try it on for the week or for your life or for the evening. And maybe the way that I offered the practice of metta was resonant, and maybe it wasn't. There's so many ways to practice. But play with it. Notice how it is to incline the heart mind in a wholesome direction. Notice what happens. I'm offering up metta to the universe. Through everyone we come in contact with, any benefit that may have been generated by practicing together may ripple out into the world. May the fruits of our practice be a benefit to all beings everywhere and bring peace and liberation without limits. Mm -hmm.